Today, we're gonna to talk about the GA4 Attribution Paths Report. This video is gonna try and break it down really simply, and I'm also gonna make the case as to why I think this is probably the most vital report that businesses need to be paying attention to as we move forward in this AI-driven age. The Attribution Paths Report in GA4 essentially tells the story of how someone starts off as a stranger and then becomes a purchaser. The point of this is to try and track all of the touch points across a journey. And what I mean by touch points is when they arrive at our website, they've usually arrived from a source. It could be from organic social media, it could be from a paid search campaign, it could be from an ad on Meta, uh, it could be from any number of different sources. So these touch points often form a user journey. If we were to look at each of these touch points, we would be able to stitch together this story and understand how someone discovered us and also uh, what was the last thing they did just before they purchased. So I'm gonna screen share in a minute. I'm gonna walk you through how the report works and what you can learn from it. But first I wanna make the case as to why I think this is so important. Right now, businesses all over the world are spending money on different platforms because they're trying to generate sales. And therein lies a major problem because we tend to look at the reporting functionality in each one of those channels in order to try and understand if that channel is doing good or bad. Sometimes that's problematic because the reporting tools in each of these platforms are essentially marking their own homework in a way. They may be presenting, let's say, a biased version of events, and sometimes that doesn't add up across the board. If you imagine you saw that uh, your Meta ad account was telling you that $1 was uh, converted from an ad, and Google saying $1 was converted from an ad, and TikTok and Pinterest or whatever is all saying that they have converted a sale, but in your store you've only made $1 of revenue. Which one's telling the truth, and how do we discern which one of those platforms was the most effective at drawing this person to eventually come and buy. I like to distill this down to an even simpler problem. Let's imagine you were spending a large portion of your budget on a social media channel and while you're getting lots of reach it doesn't look like the campaigns are doing well because your return on ad spend or the reporting of how much money that campaign is making isn't looking great. However when you look at your search campaigns on a different channel your return on ad spend is really high because it seems that those ads are converting lots of sales. It's intuitive to assume that the best place to spend more money is on the one that's converting the most amount of sales. So you might put all of your money into search campaigns. However, what if it's the case that the social media channels were you know, bringing lots of prospective brand awareness to lots of new people who won't necessarily buy right away, but then at a later date end up coming back and buying and seeing a search ad? The question you're really asking is if your store brings in a dollar, how much of that dollar should be attributed to the search or how much should be attributed to the social media channels? It's really hard to tell if you can only look at the reporting within each platform. So enter the GA4 attribution path report. The whole point of this is to watch what happens in a user journey, see where they arrive from initially, see how many touch points from various different channels happen along the ride, and then to see what the last thing they did before they purchased it. So the idea here is when you earn a dollar in your store, GA4 is going to help attribute that conversion value between these different points in the journey, and we'll talk about how that works in just a minute. Now, a huge warning flag and a massive word of advice. Please don't look at your attribution path report unless you're certain that the data that your analytics is receiving is correct. Google Analytics, in more cases than not, uh, suffers from poor quality data being fed into it. If you're using e-commerce stores, scripts and apps that you install can um, interfere with analytics. It can do things like double counting events or sometimes not counting events at all. Or scripts can sometimes conflict with one another. So a very important step is to audit and check that the data that's coming into J4 is correct because the last thing you wanna do is start making inferences, even worse, making business decisions based on incorrect data. Now, what we suggest as a general rule of thumb is that your GA4 should be receiving server-side data. There's a different video on this, the description's in the link, but if you wanna check out that your data infrastructure is compliant, that it's first party, that you're getting accurate data and it's audited, hit the links below because that's vital before you move on. So let's dive in and have a look at an attribution path report. So we're in GA4 
and this is what it looks and feels like. The first thing that probably jumps out at you is this early, mid, and late touch point and the way that's broken up into these kind of three cohorts. So if you imagine that there was a user journey with multiple touch points, they arrived at your site multiple times before triggering a key event. So maybe that key event could be a purchase, can be other things, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just focus on someone buying something. If you have lots and lots of different touch points, the first 25% of them would be defined as early touch points. The middle 50% would be defined as mid touch points. And the final 25% of the user journey would be late touch points. Now, one question I've been asked before is why? What's the point in breaking them down like this? And the easy answer is it's a way to normalize what's happening across paths of varying lengths. You could have a user that came to your website from different sources and triggered, I don't know, 20 touch points, or you could have someone that did five or even one. The idea is instead of getting overly high resolution and overly granular on breaking down everything by the exact number of touch points, you can try your best to normalize this in a simple way and say we can look at early, mid and late touch points. If you do want to go high resolution and if you really want to break apart the analytics, you are going to notice that in the top left you can choose which key events you want to look at and you can also open up filters and talk about exactly how many uh, touch points you want to study in the user journey. For example, if I said I only want to look at people with one touch point, well guess what? That automatically classes as a late touch point which you see here. I'll load it up and you'll see that uh, ping into late touch points. And you can probably imagine that if you have uh, only two touch points, that can only either be early or late because one's in the first 25% and one's in the last 25%. So as we just go through this and I can show you how this works, you're probably getting the idea that once you have three, you have mid touch points that start to arrive and you can also do a little bit of logic and say, show me uh, user journeys that triggered a purchase that had over four touch points and there you go if you want to get high resolution you can just make sure you've got a plan and a purpose for why you're doing it instead of just looking at data for data's sake so let me clear that filter for a minute and let's just absorb what we're looking at here we have different channels by source and what's cool about this is you can also break this down by campaign by medium by channel group uh, and really the world's your oyster when it comes to getting into the analytics for your purpose i tend to like to look at this by source because usually the question being asked by businesses is which channel is driving discovery the most or which channel is cultivating users the most or which channel is closing sales the best now a really common misunderstanding about this screen when we're looking at the attribution path report are these percentages here so you're going to see in early touch points we have 15 percent or 15.85 percent in mid we have 27.08 and in late touch points we have 57. each attribution path report is going to look completely different to different businesses but a common question i get is why does this not say 25 percent if we know that 25 percent of the early touch points sit in early why is this not 25 and why is the mid not 50? And why is the late not 25? Because by definition, that's what these cohorts are showing us. These numbers here are telling us what percentage of the conversion value should be attributed to these early, mid, and late touch points. That's a vital thing to understand. And it's quite clear that in this particular example, we can see that GA4 believes that the majority of the conversion value is really being triggered by late touch points. So that means that these late touch points, GA4 believes are the key reasons why purchases are happening or the key reasons why this particular key event is being triggered. This is really helpful for us to try and understand the differences between each of these different sources and what role they're playing in our marketing engine. For those of you who aren't familiar with Klaviyo, this is a CRM system and this is a way for businesses to broadcast to subscribers. So it's not the craziest thing to see that Klaviyo is very good at generating purchases in this late stage because for them to even be part of Klaviyo or Klaviyo, wherever, however you pronounce it, they usually have to have a longer journey. They've often been to the website, they might have returned, they've signed up to a web form, they've probably seen an ad, they've become a subscriber, and then eventually they've opened an email and then have gone and bought something. 
So if you imagine that user journey, it makes sense to us that a platform like that might find most of its value deriving efforts in the late stage uh, of the user journey. Now counter to that, if you're running adverts on Meta where you were excluding warm users, you know, people that have been to the website, people that have been to your social media, you might expect that something like Facebook might be much more incremental or more of the conversion value might sit in the early touch points. And this exploration is how we actually find out the truth of what's happening. And it can be really, really insightful. Now remember, number one, we have to make sure that the data arriving in GA4 is accurate. And number two, please do make sure that you're using your UTM tags correctly. You've got your campaign, you've got your source, you've got your medium. Because while GA4 is really good at making an assertion of where people are coming from, uh, neat and uh, correctly formatted and consistent UTM tagging is going to be a very key part of making sure this attribution path report is easy and clear to read and it's giving you the correct information. Now on a different video you can learn how to make sure your GA4 channel groupings are accurate uh, but for the sake of this video I just wanted to highlight that. Make sure your UTM parameters are all in place correctly. Now you might want to ask the question at this point in the video, how does GA4 know? If there is a user journey with four touch points and they arrived from a social channel and then they came in organically and then they converted from a CRM system, what mechanism can GA4 implement in order to know that it's gonna give, I don't know, 80% of the conversion value to the early touch point instead of the late touch point? How does it work? Well, let's find out. GA4 uses data-driven attribution. And what that really means is GA4 is trying to take in a holistic view of a user's journey. As they go from being a stranger to interacting with the site for the first time, to returning, coming back multiple times, and eventually triggering a key event, GA4, unlike many of the other platforms in isolation, GA4 gets to see which sources influence that user to come to the website. Now, of course, I don't have a magic looking glass that can peer behind the code of GA4's uh, black box of this data attribution system, but we do know the fundamental mechanics of how it works, and that would be to compare the multitude of user journeys that go from stranger to purchase and to see which one had the highest probability of bringing incremental value. And really what I mean is if you were to compare two very similar paths, one path that didn't result in a purchase, but a second path that did, GA4's data-driven attribution model would look at what the difference was in that path and it would attribute a statistical likelihood that that touch point was the reason why the purchase happened. Now, if you imagine doing that iteratively over thousands and thousands or millions of interactions, this data-driven model is constantly comparing and learning the paths that don't result in a purchase and the paths that do. And that, in a nutshell, is how this GA4 system works when it comes to taking a particular conversion value that happened at the store and then partitioning that out to what it believes was the most influential part of the journey that went towards causing that purchase. Now, it kind of makes sense when you think about it, especially when you consider that GA4, given the correct, accurate and consistent data and consented data, may I add, that given that data is accurate, this is one of the best learning models and best AI algorithmic systems that we can benefit from as business owners to try and understand where is the real conversion value being presented. So if we rewind back to the original problem we were looking at in this video, if we are spending lots of our budget on incremental social exposure and brand awareness, but we find that our search campaigns are converting the highest, if we look in each one of the platforms, we might find a low ROAS on our incremental platform, and we might find a really high ROAS in our search platform. But if we were to look into the attribution path analysis, GA4 might suggest that actually most of the purchases were coming from people who discovered the brand on the social platform, and then eventually went through and bought via search. You can imagine that getting this right or wrong, or even having the data to make the decision on this, could mean the life or death of a business because it allows us to have a navigation system to avoid the trap of putting more and more budget into a platform that is self-reporting the highest ROAS. So wrapping up this video, how do we use this to actually make informed decisions on where to spend our money? There's no universal ideal. 
as you know, businesses are different. You have different products, you have different margins, you have different levels of competition for keywords or you're advertising in different markets. So there's far too many variables and businesses are too bespoke to just assume that there's a blanket universal ideal of how an attribution paths report should work. And of course, you need to take this into context when it comes to how your business is performing and really what you're trying to diagnose or what you are trying to uh, increase. So if we look at the screen here, I want to show you an example of a classic story, which is a platform such as Meta, and this is applicable across many different platforms, that people often put a lot of budget towards in the assumption that it's an incremental platform. That what's happening is when they're spending money, they are reaching new people, and the idea is to bring in new customers. This problem often manifests as a symptom of new customers dropping or just trying to understand why budgets don't seem to be as effective as they once were. I believe that one of the major problems we face in these platforms is the fact that they are so well powered by AI. And if we are going to instruct a platform, for example, to go and get us purchases, that platform might be so well versed at retargeting consumers that before you know it, you can spend a lot of money hitting people that are maybe already brand aware or even worse they could already be previous customers that are sitting in a crm but your ads platform is spending money putting ads in front of them because it's low-hanging fruit for it to get sales and show you a high roas and remember lots of us actually ask to optimize towards conversions or to optimize towards ROAS so you can understand how this problem occurs when we use this tool we have a really powerful way to observe where the conversion value is being attributed in a particular channel. And in this case, we notice that despite us thinking that Facebook was such an incremental platform, when we looked at the attribution pass report, it felt very much like Facebook was being awarded conversion credit by GA4 in the mid and the late touch points, which didn't really make sense with what we thought Meta or Facebook was doing. So to further diagnose this, we did end up going into the campaigns and looking at the segments whether it was you know, socially engaged website visitors or even existing customers. And we did find further evidence that a lot of these Advantage Plus, um, same thing for Pmax or these various AI campaigns, we did find that it really was doing a lot of retargeting. Now, of course, that's on us to then change our strategy to look at making exclusions and make sure we're forcing the hand of these uh, AI systems towards uh, more incremental sales. But when you start to get this data in and you can observe it in this manner, it can really inform in a great way where you should be spending your budgets, what your channels are doing, and how each channel in a way fits into this story of cultivating and generating purchases across a user journey. And a reminder, your strategy is going to be different to others. And this is just a tool to help understand whether the strategy you've implemented on each of your channels is actually showing in the data that's being received in your website and the conversion value that's being attributed to that source. So on that note, I hope this video was helpful. If you've got any questions, ping them in the comments below. And for anyone who needs help with this, if you want to have your data infrastructure audited, if you need to have this set up and checked, and if you're operating in a way where this stuff is particularly important, then of course, please feel free to reach out to one of our experts at TDS, at Transparent Digital Service services.com links are all below but most importantly good luck with things moving forward and i hope the attribution path report in ga4 is helpful all right till next time